fallopian tubes guys you know what exactly are fallopian tubes fallopian tubes are the tubular structures which are attaching to the uterus at a point of cornua see these are the fallopian tubes these tubular structures which you are seeing here which i am highlighting these are known as the fallopian tubes now these fallopian tubes are attaching to the uterine body at the region of cornua we know it okay there is no doubt but this uterus this fallopian tubes it's it's having certain parts okay you have to know the parts and you have to know the what are the important points you need to keep in mind okay now let's discuss the important parts let me show you one more image so that you'll be having a clear idea okay let's see this image okay yeah let's concentrate here see guys this part of the fallopian tube okay this part of the fallopian tube this is known as in fundibular part or fimbrial end okay this part is known as in fundibular part after that we are having a one more area so this part the next part okay this part is known as ampulla okay guys next we are having the next region this part of the fallopian tube this part is known as this part is known as isthmus okay and the part which is going into the uterus it is known as interstitium okay interstitial part now what are the important mcq points you need to keep in mind for our exams okay ampullary part what are the important mcqs okay ampullary part of the fallopian tube is the place where fertilization occurs okay fertilization occurs here okay in the ampulla and ampulla is the most common site of a ectopic pregnancy most common site for ectopic pregnancy is ampulla okay now let's come with the let's discuss about the isthmus what important mcqs you have to keep in mind regarding isthmus okay isthmus is the place where you will be doing a tubectomy okay see if you want to perform tubectomy the most preferred site is isthmus why because if you, if the if the female wants to conceive again you need to give the reanastomosis isthmo isthmic reanastomosis is having a most are uh, is having a highest success rate so isthmus what's is the most important point to keep in mind it's the place where you can do the tubectomy okay now interstitium what is the most important point of the you know regarding interstitium now interstitium is the narrowest part okay the narrowest part in the entire fallopian tube is the interstitium so interstitium is a anatomical sphincter okay interstitium is acting as a anatomical sphincter the second narrowest part in the fallopian tube is isthmus so isthmus okay now one more important point for the isthmus is it's the second narrowest part as its second narrowest part it's acting as physiological sphincter okay now never forget these important mcqs okay ampulla is a place where fertilization occur ampulla is the place where ectopic pregnancies can occur isthmus if you want to do the tubectomy isthmus is the most favored side why because isthmo isthmic anastomosis is having highest 
chances of success next interstitium is the narrowest part interstitium acts as a anatomical sphincter okay enough if you know these important points enough now let's parts we have discussed now lining epithelium what is the lining epithelium in the fallopian tubes the lining epithelium in the fallopian tubes is ciliated columnar epithelium okay what are the special kinds very very important mcq point a special kinds of cells which are present in the fallopian tubes are peg cells okay now what is the blood supply for the fallopian tubes now once concentrate guys the medial two third the medial two third of the fallopian tube okay let me show you the medial two third of a fallopian tube is getting its blood supply okay the medial two third of a fallopian tube it's getting its blood supply from the uterine artery okay now let me show you now this medial two third this medial two thirds it's getting its blood supply from the uterine artery and the lateral one third of the fallopian tube it's getting its blood supply from the ovarian artery okay important mcq points the blood supply for the fallopian tubes okay let me rewrite uh, rewrite again so that you will be getting a better idea now yeah blood supply medial two third from the uterine artery lateral one third from ovarian artery okay now supply now supply for the fallopian tube is from a t11 a t12 l1 segments okay now develop from i have already said you guys the uterus cervix upper two third of the vagina and the fallopian tubes even they all got their origin from mullerian duct okay now completed so fallopian tube is also completed so the last topic okay now we will be discussing is the ovaries okay guys now you can see whatever you are uh, seeing here is a cross section of the ovary now how many ovaries does a female have a female have two ovaries what is the function of the ovaries ovaries contain the developing follicle which releases the ovum okay now what we have to keep in mind okay for our exam a ovary measures what is the size of the ovary a oh, height length you know that thing height length width and height it's a 3 into 2 to 1 cm okay now formed it these ovaries are formed intra abdominally at a t10 segment and they have descended down and now they are play you no know, at first they are developed a t10 segment later they will be descended down and they will be placed in the ovarian fossa okay now with the help of ovaries descended down okay they are formed at t10 segment no doubt they are descended down with the help of gubernaculum okay so gubernaculum with the help of a structure gubernaculum the ovaries are going to descend down from a t10 to ovarian fossa now ovaries are covered by or ovaries are lined by you know once concentrate on the surface of the ovaries you are having you know the female will be having a cuboidal type of cells cuboidal type of epithelial cells this is known as a germinal epithelium okay now ovary is covered by germinal epithelium which are cuboidal cells okay cuboidal cells now ovaries in relationship with the ligaments guys ovaries are present in the ovarian fossa but these ovaries are attached to the uterus medially and the ovaries are attached to the pelvic wall laterally even these ovaries are attached to the broad ligament posteriorly so you have to know ovaries 
in relationship with their ligaments. Now, try to concentrate. Ovaries attached with with lateral pelvic wall. Okay. With the help of which ligament? A very, very important MCQ. It is a infundibulo pelvic ligament. Infundibulo pelvic ligament. Now, ovaries are attached to ovaries attached to uterus. Okay. Ovaries are attached to the uterus via which ligament guys? Via ovarian ligament okay with the help of ovarian ligament ovaries are attached to the uterus next ovaries attached to a posterior wall of broad ligament okay with the help of okay with the help of meso Varium. So, in the exam, they will be asking you, mesovarium or mesovarium connects ovaries with the posterior wall of the broad ligament. Infundibular pelvic ligament connecting ovaries to the lateral pelvic wall. Ovarian ligament connects the ovaries with the uterus. Okay. So, we have discussed about the ovaries and their ligaments. Next. What else we have to keep in mind? Next, discuss about the uh, blood supply. Uterus is getting its blood supply from the uterine artery. Even ovaries are getting it, their blood supply from the ovarian artery. Okay, blood supply of the ovaries is coming from ovarian artery. Okay, now what is the important MCQ you have to keep in mind? Ovarian artery, uterine artery is a branch of anterior division of internal iliac artery. Ovarian artery is a branch of abdominal aorta. Okay, ovarian artery is a branch of abdominal aorta. A super important MCQ. Okay, now, if for example, if this is the abdominal aorta, from abdominal aorta, okay, a female is getting the ovarian artery at which level at l2 okay at l2 level ovarian artery is taking its origin from the abdominal aorta what is the nerve supply guys and the last and final you know mcq uh, for this video it's the nerve supply of the ovary the nerve supply of the ovary is coming from anyone it's coming from the ovarian plexus okay now in this uh, video we, we have covered all the external genitalia of the female okay all the external genitalia of the female all internal genitalia of the female and all the related mcqs we have discussed everything so in the next video we'll discuss about the uh, menstrual cycle in a, a female okay thank you